I thought I'd work with some slightly different colours today. Uh, instead of my full rainbow spectrum, I'm going to be working with uh, purple, silk purple, velvet purple and violet. Uh, so here we go. Let's get going. Starting in with the silk purple, which is a nice light pinky purple colour. And then I'm going to be blending up the canvas into the darker sequence of colours. Let's see how I get on. It was actually a very hot day when I was doing this, which uh, meant that blending was quite difficult because the paint was incredibly sticky and actually started to dry almost before it hit the canvas. So to get around that, I dampened the bristles of my brush in some water and then squeezed as much water out of them as I possibly could. Uh, I didn't want too much water in the paint. I didn't want the acrylics to start behaving more like watercolours. I still wanted nice thick paint, but by making the bristles uh, slightly damper uh, than they are normally, I, I was able to get the paint to actually move uh, in a slightly more free way, which enabled the blending to be more successful. Okay, now I'm happy with that. Um, on to the next stage. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to be painting on a large white circle, and I've marked out roughly where I want to go, in a very basic, simple way, using a large plastic plate and a pencil. Uh, and here I am, slowly working my way round the rim of the circle, using white acrylic. Effectively, I'm painting a moon. Uh, so I wish to blend out the vast majority of the darker purple tones uh, so that I can then uh, work on making my moon look like a three-dimensional object in a lovely dark purple sky. So let's just see what it looks like when I've done that. Okay, so there's the outline of my moon. I'm now going to use a thicker brush and a nice thick amount of white paint in order to blend out that purple in the centre of my moon. There's no great finesse needed in this bit, just need to get the coverage with the paint. If the paint's a little bit patchy, it doesn't matter. It will just make my moon look a little bit more interesting with some of its craters. There we go, that's my base colour for my moon. And 
from here on in I'm going to be adding a little bit of Payne's Grey in a shaded area in rounded strokes around where I think the darker elements of the moon would appear to be. The light on the moon is in fact a reflection of the light from the sun. Uh, so we're going to be just using light strokes in a round direction. The furthest side of the moon away from the sun. It doesn't need an awful lot, just little touches. Uh, blend it in with a little bit of extra white to add some more highlight. Once I've achieved that, I'm just going to take a little white on a very dry brush and take that outside the defined edges of the moon, just to make it shimmer a little bit as it sits there in a dark sky. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now all my picture really needs is something to anchor it uh, to the Earth, because obviously we're standing on the Earth looking at the Moon. I'm going to be drawing in some tall grasses using very dark violet, uh, so that it's effective. We're effectively looking at the Moon lying in the long grasses down on the Earth and admiring how beautiful she is. Just going to build up layer after layer of grass until I'm happy with it. Now this is massively therapeutic uh, and really it doesn't matter how much grass or how little grass you actually put on it. It really is down to how you feel uh, and when you're happy with it then you stop. That's all I've got today for you from the house that sat down. And I hope you really enjoy it.